Hello, and welcome to Bolt Action by the Numbers, Part 2. In the first part, I discuss some of the nation distributions and order dice limits. In this one, I'll be discussing some of the unit choices and numbers involved in that. As always, all of these images are owned by Warlord Games. To preface this information, just like in the previous video, it's a 1,000 point list, generic reinforced platoons, and units from the errata and armies of book only. This is a good limitation on what was brought and can give a good idea of what people consider good and competitive for those lists. Excluded from this review were the world team lists and the alternate lists not being played. This totaled 44 lists being analyzed. As always, there is some potential for human error or stuff lost in translation with the army lists. But without further ado, let's get started. There were 44 inexperienced lieutenants, 28 regular, and of those, 10 of those lieutenants had assistance. There were no first lieutenants in any of those primary lists that were reviewed. There were 13 inexperienced commissars and kempatais. One of them had an assistant. This does show that players think of the officers as attacks. These are going to be hidden rather than on the front lines. Uh, these are great considerations for sniper priority, so let's keep that in mind when we go to the snipers later on, because most of these are going to be inexperienced. There was, in fact, one medic brought by a German player as veteran. This was the only one. Admittedly, I don't know how that did, but remember, Soviets didn't sign the Geneva Convention, so they can freely fire at this medic. Um, there were quite a few lists which lacked the flak to prevent airstrikes, but there was one air observer, which was brought by a U.S. player. So, pretty statistically infrequent to face one of those. However, there were the eight uh, true British lists that brought the free artillery observer. The one um, British list that did not is the Australian version. As for the support weapons, there were... Uh, a handful of anti-tank rifles, one inexperienced, five regular, in fact, one veteran. There were only three bazooka, piats, and panzerschrecks. In fact, I believe that is two piats and one bazooka, more specifically. Surprisingly low numbers here in some of the anti-tank options, considering the amount of armor that was being brought. However, there were 24 inexperienced, three regular, and then uh, one veteran anti-tank suicide or dogmine. In fact, the veteran was a dogmine of the Soviets. Um, so you may want to brush up on how to play against or how people are using those dogmines because they are seeing competitive play. A lot of those inexperience are going to be your suicide anti-tank people from the Japanese and the Chinese lists. To no one's surprise, there were no machine guns on those primary lists. Uh, let me know in the comments. If you think they should be played, how to play them, or what changes they need to be made for that uh, phantom of a version 3 that's been coming for quite a while. There were 14 regular snipers and 10 veteran. Uh, interestingly enough, that's 28 out of 44. So about a third of the lists are not going to have snipers. And there weren't too many lists. In fact, I only think there were one that had two snipers in it. This is rather surprising considering the number of inexperienced officers and team weapons being brought. However, this veterancy of 10 veteran snipers it is a little higher than we tend to see in a lot of these uh, bigger events. This means the sniper wars are going to be fought more straight on. As for the support weapons, so the mortars, the, there were 5 inexperienced light mortars, 1 regular. There were 20 inexperienced medium mortars. 10 regular, and every single one of the regular mortars had a spotter. There were 9 inexperienced heavy mortars. So it looks like if you're going to use a spotter, you're going to hit that sweet spot as a medium mortar, hide it, use that spotter for your firing, things like that. The inexperienced, there was quite a few. Definitely the um, bread and butter of a lot of these lists for their HE and uh, shooting at dug-in troops. There were three inexperienced light howitzers, eight regular, and five of those had spotters. So 
a lot of people had mentioned that their regulars were going to be used more for the uh, direct firing and things like that, but there were some options for hiding those and doing indirect with spotters. Two inexperienced medium howitzers, nine regular, again, seven spotters. The vast majority of the people are choosing to use those spotters. There was one regular heavy howitzer with a spotter. And as for armored fighting vehicles, there was one inexperienced, which is going to rely on that indirect fire, and then five regular. If I recall correctly, only one of those howitzer tanks was a U.S. Uh, 105 Sherman. The rest were going to be the Japanese howitzer vehicles. There was one light anti tank gun, if I recall correctly, that was a British one that can shoot for the two inch template. And then the medium, there were four ZIS 3s, which again, that's uh, the one that can shoot either the AT or P. There was one regular dual purpose 88 run by the Germans, and then two stationary auto cannons and five AFVs that were used as an auto cannon. There was one AA truck, one Crusader 3 AA tank, and then three Kugel Blitzes that were represented by that number. So a lot of those AFV auto cannons are going to have that higher armor and be able to kind of push up and threaten quite a bit. Lots of multi launchers. No surprise here. 13 stationary and 9 vehicle mounted multi launchers. You're going to see those in the vast majority of games. Lots of lists had multiple, in fact. Here's where grouping the units kind of gets into uh, some personal preference. I took vehicles and I grouped them by role of their armor and effect and distributed that among a lot of the broad categories rather than saying this is how many jeeps there were this is how many kubo wagons with machine guns this is how many motorcycles with machine guns so i've got a few categories uh there were eight of those machine gun vehicles and then the one step up for that would be the machine gun vehicles that had multiples that is actually five um, two of those are Tokarevs, and then there were three additional uh, British Airborne Jeeps. I apologize, that sh that's a five, not a two there. There were 21 7 plus armored cars. A lot of the minor nations, the, I think the Polish were using some of the machine gun armored cars and things like that, but pretty prominent in this um, type of scenario where a lot of people we're looking at just using a single platoon or using some cheaper vehicles to fill out two platoons. There were a total of 11 7 plus light tanks, one inexperienced, nine regular, one veteran. It kind of seems odd to see the inexperienced and the veteran. I'd be curious to talk to those people who had run those. The 8 plus armored cars, there were a few. There were six of those at regular. 8 plus tank, there were 3 inexperienced and 25 regular. Of that 25 regular, 19 of those were upgun stewards. And by that I mean a steward with additional options chosen for uh, machine guns. There were only a handful of 9 plus tanks. There were 4 regulars in there. None of the chaffies, no Panzer 3 F seen play, but many of the comparables. A um, little surprising, honestly. Everybody's favorite category, and what I will be discussing in depth in video three, is going to be the infantry squads. There were 78 inexperienced infantry. 29 of those were bamboo spear fighters, or gunless, uh, more specifically. There were 42 regular infantry squads. There, there's a handful of special options that are listed here. Interestingly, only three of them ran flamethrowers. Not all nations have the option to use flamethrowers in the regular squads, but a few of them do. There were 87 veteran infantry squads, and 29 of those had flamethrowers, and 11 of those were cavalry. It does appear that people are choosing either veteran or inexperienced when building their army, or some combination thereof, uh, with veterancy being a high priority for the infantry. Keep those infantry alive, 
use those vehicles support weapons to kind of uh, gain control and then push up with your infantry. Flamethrowers. There were 16 regular flamethrower teams and four veteran flamethrower teams. Not a whole lot of fear of the snipers with the regulars or people who are used to using them with transport vehicles. Get in a Kubel wagon. Hey, I've got that increased threat range. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to get threatening punch maybe at the, the end of a turn and then possibly get the first die next time or something along those lines. People are, are pretty comfortable playing with flamethrowers that they've gotten used to using that regular rather than better. There were only three armored cars that ran the flamethrowers. And then one, only one flamethrower tank in this case. As for the transports, the small ones, category three to six, three inexperienced, 12 regular, five veteran, seven and nine, there were three inexperienced, 12 regular. And for the truck category at 10 plus, there were 11 regular, two veteran. So lots of lists running at least one or two transports tends to be pretty staple. Some lists running considerably more than that. But the real surprise comes in this one. At armored transports, or armored transport vehicles, 29 at regular. Now, while most of these are brand carriers, there are quite a few Hanomags, or Altis more specifically, in that count. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. People are putting that priority on the survivability of those transports, not wanting to lose those order dice, spending those few extra points that maybe they've skimmed off elsewhere. There were only just a handful of toes, two inexperienced, one regular, one veteran. Of note, I think all of these come in at under 18 points. So even at the veteran, so no big surprise there. And with that, I look forward to seeing you in video three, where I'll be discussing some of the nation-specific information and their distributions of their infantry selected and how well they perform. Uh, thank you as always, and have a wonderful day.